President Trump today signing the 2019 John McCain National Defense Authorization Act, which gives $716 billion to the U.S. military. This as he continues to push back against uh, really uh, bad political actors around the world. And unfortunately, these, uh, these folks that we're fighting against uh, are all willing to allow their citizens to endure great suffering to protect their power and their egos. Back with me now to discuss the rumor Murdoch and Jillian Melcher. One thing that stood out to me over the weekend, Erdogan in, a, in a Turkey cracking down on social media sites that uh, he claimed were economic terrorists. Of course, we've seen this kind of crackdown after the failed coup attempt. Also over the weekend, I read a, a great article that if China is to win the so-called tariff battle, it will be because of their surveillance uh, technology, uh, which is frightening more and more of their citizens into submission, Jillian. Yeah, I mean, that surveillance technology is actually terrifying. Uh, they're doing stuff like face scans, where if you're caught jaywalking, they can identify who you are and send a ticket. And then even more severely, we're, we're seeing increased persecution of Chinese Christians. We're seeing a crackdown on the Uyghurs. The Tibetans live uh, without freedom. And I really think that this is important to understand. America needs to be an example. And I think that's why um, people are so upset during the couple of times where Trump seems to engage in moral equivalence. Because the rest of the world really does look to America as an example, as a beacon of freedom. And I think we see freedom on retreat in many places. Roy? Yeah, I think we do. And unfortunately, we see it in Turkey, which you don't forget is a NATO country. Uh, and up until the arrival of Erdogan, uh, Turkey for the last previous 60, 70, 80 years or so was Western looking, uh, open minded. Yes, it was largely a Muslim country, but one that was not in any way fundamentalist. Well, well Ataturk, sort of the founder of Turkey. Correct. His, Ataturk, his goal was the uh, modern day Islamic society. Correct. And Yes. yes, which really was a model for, for the uh, entire way that Islam uh, can, uh, can survive the challenge and the onslaught of radical Islam. Uh, and now, unfortunately, with Erdogan, he's sort of like a mullah in a suit. And you see all this crackdown, this uh, decrease in human rights, and now increasing tensions in the United States. So it's a, it's a very sad and troubling state of affairs. So we're seeing it in China. We're seeing it in, in Turkey. We're seeing it in Russia uh, to maybe a lesser degree. But certainly Putin has a, a, a pretty vice grip kind of hold, dictatorial hold on there in Iran. I wouldn't uh, say to a lesser extent at all. People who oppose him tend to end up dead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. Thanks to Polonium. Good, yeah. yeah, good good point. Although, uh, you know, uh, he does pick out political poli political. Um, uh, opponents and journalists, but on a wider scale, for instance, in Iran, because I think that's where we should probably should be looking, it feels like we've got an opportunity, not necessarily to force regime change, but not look the other way. I feel like the Obama administration had a great opportunity when the Iranian people were r scratching and clawing for some sort of revolution 2.0, if you will, that America sort of let them down. Yeah, I mean, the Green Revolution was a case in point missed opportunity. I think this is why it is so important for the Trump administration to stay focused and pay attention to human rights, um, especially if he's engaging in more discussions with dictators. I, I can't imagine how demoralizing it would have been if you're a North Korean dissident to see some of what went on. And I think the White House needs to be a little bit more assertive on human rights because there are people who oppose those regimes and they really need American support. Although, Deroy, you have to be careful, right? I mean, uh, you know, the... the what, what the general statescraft hasn't worked to this point. The, we've seen the emergence of all of these folks long before Trump came into office. So, you know, I, you know, I think the idea that you engage them to a degree, uh, but you also behind the scenes, because look at what happened to Russia's stock market last week. That's right. uh, we've got some sanctions going on there that are going to be very biting and, and, and certainly more, more of a, an impressive bite than anything Trump could have said at a press conference. This is very true. And in fact, you mentioned that press conference in Helsinki uh, two or three weeks ago. And the response to that was, oh, my God, this proves that Donald J. Trump is a KGB agent and he's uh, secretly speaking Russian to Putin every night on the phone and so on. And yet, uh, you know, a week and a half, uh, two weeks later, we get these incredible sanctions. We get this uh, dip in the uh, markets in Russia and we get Medvedev saying this is economic war. So this is really a very interesting change of, uh, of affairs from the uh, you know, Trump equals KGB uh, narrative that we got just a, a fortnight ago. Are, are, you, are you concerned about staying the course because uh, it's sort of uncharted territory? I mean, okay, these are economic wars maybe for some of these folks, uh, but the battle has begun and I think we've got to finish them. Look, I, I think just as we're seeing sanctions on Russia, one really interesting thing was sanctions on Turkey over uh, Pastor Brunson. I think it's really important to send the bad actors of the world a message that we're a strong United States. I think it is equally important to show dissidents and people who are concerned about human rights that we've got their back.